Hi everyone, we are Team Bonmeet from the University of Houston. Dr. John and Dr. Cheng are our mentor and advisor. The project couldn't have been a success without the support and guidance. My name is Nok Nguyen. I'm Ashwin Matthews. I'm Nancy Nguyen. And I'm Almira Shara. Today, we take a turn to talk about AR overview, our design with testing and results, and we end with future work and conclusion. In NASA suits, the primary goal of augmented reality or AR system is to assist the astronaut with EVA responsibility in a way that when they're on a lunar surface, they can use their time proficiently. The three tasks of navigation EVA system state in geology sampling were given to us by NASA suits. For the navigation part of the design, the AR device must have the ability to navigate the user from one point to another and to the designated geology sampling location. For the EVA system state, the device must have the ability to interact with the designated suit telemetry stream and display vitals. And finally, for the geology sampling, the device must have the ability to help the user with science sampling and note taking. In this table on the right, side, right hand side, list of tasks for analog testing are shown. So before we walk through the program, we just like to introduce some methodology used in creating it. The first consideration is interaction cost, which is defined as the sum of all mental and physical efforts used to perform a task. In this image, the user's mental efforts involve processing the GPS navigation and applying those directions they're driving, and the physical efforts involve operating the car and clicking through the GPS system with their hands. Generally, a lower interaction cost is desired. The next consideration is something called cognitive load. Look at the top and bottom lines of text. If I were to show you both lines and ask you to replicate them from memory, you'd probably have more success replicating the bottom line. This is because your brain processes information in separate groups of information called chunks. In the bottom line, your brain groups each acronym into a single chunk like IBM or USA, but the top line, however, features randomly placed letters of differing length, which forces your brain to treat each letter as a separate chunk. Cognitive load theory tells us that the brain can only handle so many chunks of information at once, and the lower that amount, the better. The last consideration is seamless task switching. When you operate your smartphone, you're very easily able to switch applications or tasks through the app browser. Similarly, we want our AR system to exhibit the same qualities when switching from an operation such as navigation to another such as geology sampling. Overall, we'll keep these three theories in mind when showcasing our AR UI. The first step in the design process is the ideation or brainstorming phase. In this phase, we took requirements from the suit's design challenge that we mentioned earlier and created a how might we question. The how might we question that we use to guide our design is how might we assist an untrained astronaut to safely complete all of the missions without feeling overwhelmed. After creating the how might we question, we brainstorm possible solutions that we wanted to include in our design. After the ideation phase was completed, we then created a user flow map that shows the steps a user could take to complete an EVA. Afterwards, we created low fidelity versions of each screen in our wireframe. Using these wireframes, we created each screen of the user flowchart in Unity. Lastly, we deployed the Unity build into the HoloLens 2 for testing. Our app is programmed to start as a home hub in which a user can choose to go through tutorials or solve from specific tasks. These features allow seamless task switching as a user can go back to the home hub at any time. What is showing in this video is what the user would see inside the HoloLens. As you can see, the tutorials are very simple and easy to follow so that anyone can learn how to use this program regardless of their level of experience. Moving on to the first task, the picture here shows the UAA physical hardware that a user would have to work with. There are 15 steps that they have to go through. And in order to not overwhelm them, we break down the injections in different frames. And we also position the injection boxes so that they are visible but not blocking the physical UAA. After the task is confirmed to be complete, the program will automatically navigate them to the next site for the second task. The second task is geology sampling. The program here to provide cue cards while allowing the user to take notes at the same time. 
our team tried out different note taking methods and we found out that using voice command to take picture of the samples is a method with the lowest interaction cost, which will be shown in this video. Take photo. So in addition to that, the digital cue cards with tools info will be available at any time. Moving on, our Navigate system is shown here and it intuitively guides the user to their destination using a glowing line and green arrow to follow from their location to the target. The target is encompassed by a large green circle and distance indicator telling the user how far they are away from their destination. When they reach the target, this circle turns bright purple, communicating to the user that they've arrived. Now on the left hand of the slide, we have our view of the final task that the user gets to perform, where they're instructed to retrieve rock samples at their destination and confirm retrieval using the task complete button in the bottom right hand corner. Throughout the entire experience, the user always sees elements showing them the status of the spacesuit, which is called the system state. To point out some of these elements, we have the vitals listed at the top of the user's view at all times. This includes items like oxygen levels and the battery time that they have remaining. During movement, however, some of these less important items disappear in an effort to reduce cognitive load. They return again when standing still. Now, if a vital is out of the expected range, you'll notice an emergency notice appears in the center of the user screen and disappears when the anomaly is either resolved or goes away. Now, finally, if the user wants to exit the experience at any time, they click the return home button at the bottom left-hand side of the screen. This semester, the team has had managed to conduct two separate HEDEL testing. The total of 16 volunteers with different level of AR and VR experience participated. For the first HEDEL testing, the focus was more towards the visibility of the app, for the second HEDL testing, three versions of the app were tested and the focus was on both visibility and the usability. Before, during, and after each testing, the COVID-19 restrictions were followed. During the testing, the test subject was verbally guided through the experience and was asked to verbally express any trouble they had during testing and those feedbacks was noted by the team. The video of the whole process for each test subject was also recorded by one of the team member. And finally, at the end of the testing, the test subject was asked to complete the feedback survey. Overall, users indicated that our UI was intuitive and that the UI elements were easy to read. This can be seen in our post-testing survey scores as shown in the table to the right. Another key takeaway that we noticed during HIDL testing was that voice commands were highly preferred over gesture commands for the note-taking portion in the geology sampling task. For example, when taking a photo, users expressed that pressing a button to take a photo was very cumbersome. Meanwhile, saying a command like take photo to take a photo was easier for the test subjects. Lastly, we noticed that UI elements set at a distance of 0.15 meters away from the camera in the Z direction allowed for a UI element to be both readable and within reach of the user. The results and feedback from the HIDL testing allowed us to make improvements on our UI. Even though our app has been built into the HoloLens and sent to suit, there are still areas that can be further developed. These include cross-user communication, slope detection, and updated cue cards. Our design is able to assist all the tasks for analog testing, and improving those areas will be greatly helpful for actual future lunar missions like Artemis. As suits and THC programs are coming to an end, there are a few more deliverables that we have to work on, including analog testing, acid pitch, white paper, and an outreach report. The two pictures here are from the outreach event that we did, in which we showed a student how to make a quick bowling game in Unity and provided them with STEM resources from NASA. Just to wrap things up, the Suits project gave us the unique opportunity to be both designers and developers of this AR program. In semester one, our design phase, we focused solely on creating effective solutions for the challenge assigned to us. But in this semester, we had to shift our mindsets to actually coding those designs into a functional AR program. With this transition came some great takeaways for us and possibly some future teams to look out for. To start, we learned about the wonderful capabilities of the HoloLens, but more importantly, the limitations of the hardware as well. 
For example, the hall and screen is much smaller than you'd expect, and with these limitations definitely came some design changes. We also discovered just how important testing was to this process. There were multiple times we coded solutions which we thought were intuitive and easy to pick up just to learn that wasn't the case when handing it off to a test subject. Only through testing were we able to find that important user feedback and incorporate into our final design to be that much more user friendly. At the end of the semester, we're happy to say that we found a great stopping point in our program and we're very thankful to have it selected for on-site testing happening in the following month. We learned a lot these past two semesters and we hope to work on some more fun projects like this in our future careers. Thanks again for joining us and go Cougs.